Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. Andrew, the security guy here with another episode of Security Matters Hawaii. Got Dave Stevens, the professor in the house with me today, president of Kapu Technologies, amongst his other various duties. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to kick around um, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month is ending. Uh, I thought we'd get a wrap on kind of what he's seen because he's got a special lab over there they play in. And um, recently, uh, to kind of give a, some closure to this, this thing, uh, we had a lot of sessions going on around the state. Uh, some well attended, some not so well attended. We had a lot of great questions, uh, and it's been fun. But Dave, you know how I always start with, you know, what's keeping you the cyber guy? What's keeping you up at night these days, man? Well, first of all, I've got to make a correction. I'm not the president. You're or, not? Oh, no, oh, is no. Lee the president? Lee is the president okay, of my so, wife. Okay, yeah. so he lives like I do. He knows who should be in charge, and that's Lee, which is his wife, which is, I uh, commend you for that decision, yeah, sir. It, is, yeah. it stood me well, but you can you can find yourself concerned about your paycheck, so you got to keep your skills up. i got to be relevant to my own company. You've got to maintain value in the organization, I'm yeah, telling you. Cause absolutely. It, your wife will have a different way of measuring that value That's than right. perhaps you will. That's, That's all right. I'm going to say. i got to go by her measurements. Uh, yeah, yes, so that you means do. Like, well, you guys, it's a minority woman-owned business. Yeah. So. Uh, that, that's what gets us the, the better deals, I think, and, uh, and and she's got just as much education as I do. Like Christine, we all graduated HPU. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Right we on. all got our masters out there. So, and she got hers first. So I'm I don't mind working for her in the least. It doesn't keep you up at night. You're not, not worried. <laughs> no, not at all. Somebody else is in the lead. That's yeah, always that's a good. Right. That's great. Yeah. Usually not bad to be the cart. Actually. It's her <laughs> I don't mind at all. So yeah, I teach for the University of Hawaii, Kapi'olani Community College, uh -huh. and I teach ethical hacking and network security. And the uh -huh. things that keep me up are people. Oh. People. So over 50% of attacks start as social, according to the latest Black Hat survey mm, okay. of the hackers that attended Black Hat. So uh -huh. the, the people that actually went to Black Hat and identified themselves as hackers said over 50% of the time they will start with a social engineering attack first. And the second one they'll attack, and this is kind of scary, over 20% of the attacks are against OS and application vulnerabilities. So the top two things you can do mm. to keep yourself safe are train your people and update. Patch your stuff. Uh, patch your stuff. <laughs> this is uh, two easiest fixes, and it, it eliminates three quarters of the problems. You why, know? Don't, why, don't, why don't people patch their stuff? Let me ask you that question. Oh, there, there's there's uh, organizational differences, right? There's mm. Everything from, you know, the, the board doesn't understand it. They don't want to release the money to do this on time, or um, unfortunately companies make specific applications in-house for certain browsers, mm -hmm. and you cannot upgrade that browser and that operating system unless that application is upgraded because your whole system runs on it. Yep. And they say, well, it's too much money, and it's going to take too long, and it's too much effort, and unfortunately by the time they choose to do it, uh, the national health system in uh, the UK is one of those victims. Wow. They didn't want to upgrade, they kept pushing it off. We had Windows XP and Windows 7 on there the SMB 1.0, and uh, that's why WannaCry just went rampant on their mm -hmm. systems. And it was a piece of cake. Once and you get one, you got them all. And that SMB vulnerability was known. Oh, known for years. Yeah. Known so, for years. Yeah, and yeah. so hackers go look at the, the <laughs> common vulnerability database? Uh, ExploitDB.com. ExploitDB.com. Yeah. This is a simple list for these guys to find, and they just run their scripts against your stuff to find out what kind of vulnerabilities you got. It's you don't not, have to be an expert. It's kind of like shopping. They just go shopping. That's right. So. You, you, can, you can be a script kitty, which is the guy that doesn't know how to do this stuff professionally, but goes and gets the script because they, they give you the script mm -hmm. and they tell you what tools to use and it's all free and you just <laughs> set it up and fire it off and you know go get a cup of coffee and come back and see what you got. Mm. And it's that easy to do. And mm. so things like OS vulnerabilities, uh, patching your stuff and applications and training your people, you know, eliminate 75% of that. Yeah. And so if, if the hardware attack's difficult or you're patched and you're looking good, they pick up the phone and call you, and there's all of a sudden tech support from your company, or they work their way in? That's open source social, intelligence and intelligence gathering. Media. Yeah, so I, I watched a demonstration of this happen. It's on YouTube right now. You can go look it up. This is great. He, he called one person and said he was tech support and got all their information, and then he called somebody else and said, I'm that person, and he called tech support, and tech support helped him out. 
And he said, well, I, I'm trying to open this PDF file. If you could browse to this website and open it for me, you could prove that it's actually opening and it's just something on my system. So the tech support guy did that. He went to that Boom. site, opened the PDF file, and instantly was compromised. And as he was on the phone, the hacker just typed in a command line and got his entire sysinfo on there. And so he, he knew he's on the inside. And, and you know, once you get on the inside, that's your pivot machine. You sure. pivot, you scan the network, you escalate privileges and attack the main server. Okay. Yeah. And it took them less than a minute and a half. Yeah. So there you go. You're hacked in 90 seconds. So we went through a lot. I had a couple sessions. I did a session for NC Sam at the library. Yeah. I did, we did a thing at the mall. Uh, we had people coming in. Um, and it was interesting how many people have actually had something happen. They're sitting there talking to us during our session. Well, you know... I keep getting these phone calls from so-and-so, or I keep getting these pop-ups saying I need help support for my computer, something's wrong. And so I was amazed that, that they actually, a lot of people weren't aware that that was wrong. We'll talk about scams in a little bit. Um, malware, big thing. I, I, don't, I think a lot of people maybe feel or don't know that they think if their machine gets compromised, it's gonna be instant and they're shut down. These guys really wanna get in there and maybe oh, stay. No. Not, for a while yes. and hide. Cryptojack. So talk about that a little bit. Cryptojack is the latest where they want to stay in the background and hide and, and re reduce the amount of processing power they use so you don't know. And this, this happened to me just several months ago. I must have clicked on a bad link or installed some bad software and not being paying attention. So I was moving my mouse around, doing my work, and I saw a little delay in the oh. mouse pointer as I scrolled across. I thought, that's kind of odd. So I thought, Okay, maybe it's one of those cryptojacking things. So what I did is I shut off my Wi-Fi and my internet connection, and the mouse moved freely. Oh. Oh, so then I knew. <laughs> then I knew I'm connected. Yeah, yeah they're I'm, sending some of your processing power the, out the door. Yeah, so what I did is I turned that back on, and then I launched my, you know, like an equivalent of a task manager on, on my Mac. And I looked, and I saw an unrecognized process mm. that had 12% of my, my system. That's not a lot. But it's enough that mm -hmm. if you have other things running, that's taking up some time, and you want to know what's going on in there. So, you know, a quick Google search, and I found out that -da, it's crypto jacking. So I just cleaned my system, uh, and there was a removal tool you can get from places like RSA and Cisco. They all distribute this stuff freely, and FBI gives them out, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I just cleaned my whole system off and reloaded it. It was time. Yeah. It had been a couple of years. And I was free of it. But it was stealthful, and I am in the business, and I did not know I had that, mm -hmm. but it was it was an interesting. They probably got a little greedy. They were running three or four percent. They kept jacking. Yeah, let's finally, bump finally your mouse told on them. <laughs> That's right. And uh, isn't that ugly? Wow. Well, it can happen to your phone too. It's sure. not just your computer. Yeah. So I if was you're reading um, about that, uh, a few of my friends said they had an Android phone. They were scrolling through the mail. You know, as you scroll up to see your messages, and still there's that little jerking motion. Yeah. And so they went and looked at their processing to see, and the utility on Android, how how many processes are taking up their time. And sure enough, there's an unrecognized process. A couple of tools later, it's clean, mm -hmm. but it was the same thing, crypto jacking. Sure. See, crypto jacking does not care where the processing power comes from. Mm -hmm. it could be your mobile phone, which is actually more convenient, because mm -hmm. you're always connected to the internet somehow, yeah. right? So it's better than computers. Imagine that, and they're <laughs> making money. They are, and they want to stay in the background. So your computer, like ransomware is actually trending down. Mm. Crypto jacking is over 55% of the malware attacks these wow. days. Wow. Yeah, it's huge. That's so that's this this year then. That sounds that's that seems like year. a big flip cuz you know the the uh, the all the other malware the the ransomware stuff was sure, was on the rise. Not Petya last year it took over, right? Beat up some people, especially like healthcare like you brought up earlier. Right. Wow. Over 60% of healthcare right now is actually infected, they think. Oh. That is depressing, isn't it? Because the healthcare information is the it's worst, super and scary. this is what keeps me up at night. Uh, last year, the House of Representatives, the, our federal government now, tried to pass a bill that says um, companies can use your personal data from websites to find trending analysis to price out your healthcare. What? So this is great. I've brought this up before. Say Amazon gives. I'm sorry, Amazon. I'm going to pick on you for a minute. I'm sorry. This is probably not you. But if Amazon gives away the data of all the clothes you buy, okay. and they find out in your company 25% of the people are buying plus sizes, okay. right? now they know you're trending towards diabetes, mm. and they'll discontinue the diabetes offering on your medical health care. It's already happened on several plans on this wow. island. I've already seen companies discontinue all diabetic medications. Really? No coverage. Like Period. the major carriers? The major carriers. I won't mention them because I'll get sued. 
But the major characters, there are some plans that will not cover that at all. You got to buy the Cadillac coverage, and that's like the type two, whatever, from right, from right. just eating poorly or whatever. Right, not taking care perhaps. Of sure. Right. Wow, amazing. <laughs> I'm glad we have a good health and wellness program at IST. Mm. So that's a uh, hopefully that'll keep us off of that list. Well, Congress shot it down, Man. so they did not. Accept oh, but that they bill. but they offered it. The fact that somebody wrote it up. Yeah, they wrote because it because the data is available. It went for a vote. Wow, that's scary. That's scary. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> let's see. Now, what keeps you up at night? Fishing's a little beat up, but um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about cloud. Cloud okay. cloud seems to stay out of the news. I know there's been some problems with VPN. People talking about being able to get inside a VPN. I, I'm on, of the opinion that it's really just an authentication thing where they get some credentials. Then once they're in, of course they're in as with anything, but they're inside the VPN. So what's your, what have you, have you read anymore? Is, is, the, is attacking on VPN, attacking on, I think it was a remote desktop, RDP, was in the news well, from RDP Microsoft, is a huge hole. kind of stuff. It's always okay. been a huge hole. It's very hard to secure RDP. That's the port 3389 on Windows, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's always been a problem. However, there's certain ways to lock it down, and cloud providers do it pretty well. The, the biggest problem with any VPN connection is compromising either one of the endpoints. Yeah. So you compromise an endpoint, the, the VPN encryption has, is meaningless, mm -hmm. right? If I to took your key fob, and I knew your password, and I could log in as you if I stole your session key. Um, I'm you. Mm -hmm. So once I'm in your cloud environment, the security beyond that is irrelevant. Okay. Right? So th that's the biggest worry I have with, mm. with clouds is implementing that VPN correctly. And sometimes it's just not. But the bigger vendors, Microsoft, Azure's top of the line now. Mm -hmm. Microsoft has really offered a good cloud solution. I think you use this for a lot of stuff. Yeah, I, was, I was using Amazon Web Services, mm -hmm. just classically good. I mean, they, they really did their research. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon set up uh, uh, environments for the CIA and for the FBI and for Spay War, which is Space, Air, and War. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, environment. Fed ramp environment, and sure. Fed ramp, uh, yeah, and they, and they deal with FISMA. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, they're excellent, and now, uh, I use Office 365 for my company. Mm -hmm. I think you do too. And uh, I've read all their security offerings, and they're FISMA compliant, yep. which is wonderful. You know, mm -hmm. everybody's stepping up their game because we all know it's a running game. Mm. You slow down at any time, yeah. and you are overtaken. Yeah, I know the the. So we talked a little bit about multi-factor authentication to folks this year, and so we run the federated, you know, Azure Active Directory oh. uh, authentication, which is a. It's, it's really good. You don't see it very often if you're always logging in from the same machine or the same place, but as soon as you go somewhere else or anytime you change your password, which you have to do, I think, every 90 days, it will send, send you a text code that you have to use. So I have to use that, and I'll have to use it for the two or three different places, including my phone if I'm pulling mail off there every time I change that. So that I've been, I've been really happy that there's that much supervision over the people and the authentication. So that, you know, typically some guy's not authenticating from somewhere else as me. And if he is, the text comes to my phone. I'm like, whoa, somebody's trying to get into my account, and I wouldn't know that. Right. So it's pretty good. I like that when you first get it, um, the feature to have users change their own password when they lock themselves out, mm -hmm. that's disabled by default. Yeah. They want you to call into the admin, right? Mm -hmm. I had to enable that for my company. And yeah, the multi-factor authentication, it's out of band, they send you a text code, mm -hmm. or the one-time PIN, and they use something like uh, Google Authenticator, which mm -hmm. is great. You get a sure. one-time PIN on your phone, which I really enjoy. Yeah. I think that's great and convenient. Yeah. Facebook uses that, and uh, they got just they got compromised just a couple yeah. of weeks ago. 30 million users, I got an email mm. saying, congratulations, you're not compromised because you enabled two-factor authentication. Ah, right on. So I've been using the out of band text code or the Google Good. Authenticator. And uh, actually, I've gone towards a Google Authenticator. I think yeah. that's we that's use it for a lot of the different apps. We have some apps for our CRM things. I saw that I have that in addition, right? So that it's if, if you were to get in and you tried to get into that app where all the our client our CRM system is, you'd have to you'd have to, you run into the same problem again. It has a different password and a different two factor, which is always required. So you know, I, I, I get you. And we talked about quite a bit of this with the folks around town who who weren't even aware of two FA. You know, I don't, I just don't think they study up and read this kind of stuff. Well, it's um, not like great midnight reading, I mean, unless you're really into it and you've got to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it does have to be done right. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to pay bills about 60 seconds, and we'll be right back with Dave Stevens. Aloha. I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to 
see you there. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. We're here with the professor, Dave Stevens. We're talking about National Cybersecurity Awareness Month and it's wrapping up. We've done a lot of teaching around town, trying to just get back to you with those final things that we learned and maybe a bit of an update for what's been going on in case you haven't been paying attention or you didn't catch up with us at any of the events that we held in October. Um, some people brought up scams, getting the, the phone call scams, um, you know, at their house, getting email scams, getting the pop-ups on their computer. Um, what, what, do you, what do you think about that stuff? Is it, is it stuff people should be just like, oh my gosh, I didn't call you? Like if someone calls you out of the blue, hang up the phone. If they email you out of the blue, right. just delete it. Like what, what's your take on scams? So tech support scams are really gaining traction right now because really? it's the trust thing. They want to develop a trust relationship with you. That social engineering technique works mm. very well, especially with credit card companies. They can call you and say, look, we, we noticed some, uh, some purchases that you might not have made. Were you in Portugal last week? Oh, no, I wasn't. And then they start phishing inf information out of you to get account information so they can pretend to be you. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you got to be careful about these things. The so the tricks call those people back. I always do. Like, like say, thank you, let me call you back. Hang up and call the number on your credit card. That's right. Like, don't, don't ever talk to anyone who reached out to you. Verify them by calling back the, the source company, not even that person, call. And they'll the never give you the right number. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The caller no, yeah, ID yeah. is always wrong, so oh, it's yeah, a great yeah. idea to call back. Yes. And uh, and I've done that twice and found wow. out that people, You were getting scammed. I was getting scammed, yeah. Uh, Lee will actually play them, because she's been in credit cards for Oh, does years. she like it? She, she, just, <laughs> she keeps them on the phone? She reels them in, man. It's great. It's, it's so nice to hear. And then she'll report them. Mm. So, uh, you know, those call centers can go down rather quick, but they pop right back up. I had... Um, it seemed to me that in the sessions that we did, we had, it was primarily, it seemed a lot of older folks had really been victimized, especially by the, um, oh, yeah. the, the, tor the tsunami stuff, the, the hurricane stuff, the, the sort of um, uh, charity type things right. where they're calling them. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fake charity. And they, they, oh, they're think, they're, they think they're strings. doing something yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they want to they participate in something that, uh, that changes the lives for, the, for those people for the mm -hmm. better. And, and, you know, scam artists. And that was the first thing that U.S. CERT sent out. Yeah. Right? And in regard. Don't pay attention to these things. Go to reputable, reputable companies. If you want to help out, best thing to do, pick your charity and you go get them. Yeah. Don't let them call you. Exactly. Yeah. That's, you got to do that. Yeah. Hang up on these guys. <laughs> um, People don't want to be rude. Yeah, and I, I was even, I was surprised that there's this, there's, I guess, this romance thing, too, where people, they, they say, uh, they set up for the romantic association, like they really love you, but if you send me money, I'll come see you, and there's, I had some people admit to sending money to well, that, people. That's been going on for decades. What kind of scam oh, sure. is this? <laughs> uh, the Philippines, uh, Africa, um, um, Romania, and, of course, Ukraine and Russia mm. all had scams set up where the... Uh, a person who says they are a woman sends you pictures, they build a relationship, they build up some trust, they say, here's where I live, and it's a real address, you can Google it, and then, yeah, I've got to get my passport together, can you send me 500 euro or something like that? There's, a, there's always a, hey, can you help me out because I want to come see you, but I, I need an airline ticket or I need some, some money for this. That's when you know you're getting scammed. And these are lonely people, I'm thinking. I think there's a there's a group of them in a call center somewhere. They're, this is a profession for them. Yeah, and they're getting. I mean, really you think they're at. finding you because you're you're lonely. I mean, I'm wondering how they. Are you think it's just a there's three dating mass. sites out there? There there used to be uh, plenty oh, of fish. We used to be one where this is just scams galore. If I you, see. Anything outside of the country tended to be a scam, and it was it was a terrible thing. A lot of people got reeled in, especially older folks. Uh, maybe they're widowed, mm -hmm. and we're talking about older folks now that. You got to imagine they're not uh, technology natives. Yeah, exactly. Right? This is They've all... inherited technology. They witnessed, you know, the advent of technology. But you know, when they were kids, when we were kids, I mean, 
Yeah. What's, the, what's the best technology you get? The fax a, machine. A bike, man. Bicycle. That was as good as it. I had. A, I remember when I had a three-speed instead of a one-speed. You know, what <laughs> right. are you talking about? I have gears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we got a fax once in our office when I was really young, and I thought, oh, I can send a whole page of information across the country in 11 minutes. My God. In 11 minutes. <laughs> I thought, my God, it's amazing. Yeah, it's but now, you know, you, you know, gigabytes of information, streaming movies and mm -hmm. uh, social media, and they really don't understand the stuff's not out there always helping them, mm. that people will take advantage of you. A little too trusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if it seems too good to believe, don't believe it. But there's, um, our, to our folks in Hawaii, there's definitely, um, the, there are these type of attacks. They're definitely targeting people here via phone, via email, via text, via social um, uh, sites, uh, what do you call them, like um, dating sites or whatever dating they may sites, be. Right, so, right. you know, be aware of this. If someone's asking you for money and you don't know them, like, really? If yeah. they just walked up onto your street and asked you for money, would you give them money? So, Stay to the reputable sites. There's yeah. things like JDate, eHarmony, uh, Match.com. Oh. They've been around for years. They charge you an admission fee. You go through a, an extensive vetting process I see. To, to make sure you're a real person. You write, you know, a, a statement on your own. You answer a bunch of questions. Your relationship begins by answering questions from from either party. It's mm. it's a much uh, it's a much better way to get to know somebody online mm. rather than just jumping online and saying, "Hey, let's go out." You right know, on. It's, it's the uh, what do they call it? Tinder. Yeah, no. you can get into a lot of trouble there. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> okay. Oh, one more thing about yes, phones. The the phone scams are targeting immigrants a lot now, and I've gotten oh. a few in targeting. Mandarin. Okay. So what they do is they'll call you and they'll scare you and say, uh, you know, the FBI is on the way. They're going to arrest you. Uh, we need oh. to take care of your immigration status right now. So get us uh, some money into this account. Hurry. The, the feds are on their way. And what they've done is they called the police on you. Oh. They called, they called in. It's called you're not, swatting. You're maybe here too long on your visa or something? Like it could be anything. They, you know, the, so that really reason. scares you. It scares the crap out of you because the police are actually coming up to the door. And then your English isn't good, so you probably don't understand right. how to ask how they got the call about you or whatever. Right. And the you person on your phone the call is or, yeah, talking he, to you in your native tongue. Yeah, and he's building some trust. I can help you with this. They'll right. go away. Just just agree to work this with this me. This has happened dozens of times in the, oh, in the Midwest. Oh, I didn't yeah. even hear about that yet. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, um, we had some top tips that we gave out. Uh, typically in a finale. Um, I've got them up there on the screen for you now, so we'll kind of walk through some of these. Think before you click. Now this is a, this sounds really simple, <laughs> but you know, you're up too late at night, you're tired, you get, I mean, truly, if, if you weren't expecting it, don't click it. If, if you don't know who it is, definitely just delete these things. Important people will, and important information will get to you, right? If it's Hawaiian Electric about your bill or your bank and you just delete the email, trust me, they'll call it. Someone will get a hold of you if it's important. Yeah. You know, I, I try to just tell people it's just, it's just junk. I've been talking about, I think email maybe has become too risky to even use in business. It's I'm starting it's to just. Extremely risky. What's, yeah. It's become that bad. So bad. think before you click. Um, it's good advice. There's a lot of stuff behind that advice, but. 50% of the problems in social malware, engineering, yeah. social engineering, phishing, all this stuff begins with people clicking. So, man, delete it first. If it comes again, call the person. Hey, is this really from you? Like, do something. There's more to do to the think to yeah. before you click thing. Uh, you know, you get pop-up messages all the time. Sure. Windows is notorious. You get yeah. pop-up messages all the time. Don't click them. <laughs> yeah, when you're in a hurry, when you gotta get work done, that it's called a modal window. It won't go away until you click on it. Mm. Read it. Read that thing because you click OK, you're giving permission for that thing to run with your permissions yep. on your computer. And if it's not something you want, you can close it or you can kill the process with yes. the task manager. But if you just keep clicking OK, yeah. that's how viruses get permission to run on your computer. Yeah. They're, they're launching. You're and it's just right-click task manager. I used to be control out the leap, but now you can just right-click the bar and pull right. up task, and manager, task manager. And you'll see those processes. And if it ain't Word or Excel, the stuff you're running, close it and watch in, that little in window. Mac, it's go called away. activity monitors. Same you thing. You can kill, the, kill the process. Yeah. yeah. You can. Uh, and then you search your windows. machine because you got a problem. <laughs> Run a full scan. Right. Yeah, and a lot of it's click adware, and you know, a lot of it's not super malicious, but it's still taking CPU cycles and it's still tracking where you go. And all I got that one nonsense. more tip about email. Yeah. When you're writing an email, don't put anything in the two or CC fields okay. until you're done oh. and you proofread it. Okay. 
more problems happen when people send that email before you're done or if you've typed in the wrong, because it fills it out for you. Oh, you yeah, type yeah. in the first three or four letters mm -hmm. and it like, tries to guess what email you're sending it to. Mm -hmm. And I've sent stuff to my ex-wife. So, oh. yeah, be careful. Wow. Be careful that, with the email. That could be scary. <laughs> yeah, you could really blow it, you know. So just calm down, take it easy, uh, find your zen. You yes. Know, and and, and if, if it's an angry email, definitely hold, hold that in drafts for a while and think about if you really need to. Sometimes just type right. and it'll relieve that stress and you don't even need to send it. Um, <laughs> Let's go back we, to the tips. And we talked about getting AV protection, keeping it updated, keeping the machines updated. And for consumers, this could be a little more difficult, but don't rely on some service provider out of the blue calling you or emailing you saying your machine needs to be updated. That's a scam. Yeah, that's a so scam. this kind of thing you need to do yourself. Right. And yeah. a lot of and a lot of pop-ups will say your machine's been affected. Click here to purchase this software. Mm -hmm. uh, my poor father-in-law, like three, four times now. Ouch. Yeah. For, to the tune of, you know, 24 bucks, 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that adds up. Sure. You know, you scam a thousand people a day. You're making some serious coin. Sure. Yeah. And the, a lot of people doing these scams and running this stuff are living in places in the world where a buck or two a day is the, the living wage. So if they can double or triple that, they now yeah. increase their um, uh, means of living, you know, 100% or 200%. So yeah. getting a few bucks out of you is well worth their time. And good luck catching them. Yeah. Oh, no yeah. yeah. That's out of here. Yeah. Um, Public Wi-Fi. We got about a minute. Let's God. let's let's beat beat on this just briefly. Um, Don't do anything no, let's secure. Beat on, let's beat on passwords. <laughs> okay, we had password. a lot of people agreed that they use this. They admitted they use the same passwords over and over and over again. Oh, bad this, news! Yeah. This will eat you alive. Right? Yes. Uh, because if they find your password, mm. then every other site's got that password yeah. or some derivative of that password. Yeah. A lot of people say. I got this password yeah. and a one. And dog's name one, dog name two, right. dog name three. Or the birth date yeah. or something, yeah. And they think they're smart, and that's not true. You gotta use a long one, you gotta use a unique one and keep track of them. Yeah, and once, once you've compromised, and especially your financial sites, your healthcare record sites, uh -huh. gotta have different passwords for that stuff. You know, if you care about your social media getting hacked, then whatever. But those things that are critical in your life, you've got to use different passwords there and use two-factor authentication if it's offered and make it difficult. Right, because hackers are inherently lazy. I know, I'm a hacker. <laughs> and we're lazy. We want to move on. Oh, that's too difficult. I'll go hack Henry and, and, and I'm on to him and see if he's got something easy. And if he is, great. And I'll leave you alone. Right on. Because you were too hard. Yeah. Be difficult for hackers. National Cybersecurity Awareness Month is wrapping up. you got a whole of the year for you're going to hear about this stuff again ad nauseum. Don't stop practicing. Don't stop improving. Don't stop getting better. Dave, thanks for coming in. Oh, can I make one last announcement? Real quick. Okay, this is Wednesday. There's a, an event tonight on my campus at Capitan oh. Community College. We're going to have Wetware Wednesday for Halloween, 6 to 8 p.m. on campus. Free food. Wednesday. Wednesday. Not tonight. Wednesday night. We're going to broadcast on Wednesday. Awesome. So this will be Wednesday. So get over to KCC, Halloween. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. Aloha.